website says you want to you want to quote save the world, and that's a that's a really bold, <laughs> outrageous claim. <laughs> um, how, how do you think? I want to dig into that, right? Because that's that's fun. How is my metaverse making an impact that's going to save the world? <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Caleb Applegate. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Engine, and um, I'm really excited to announce our first ever podcast. We're calling it The Engine Room. Uh, the point of this podcast is once a week we're going to bring you uh, a new company uh, that we're really excited about. We're going to talk about um, whether it's a new game uh, developer or a, a new um, brand or an influencer somebody that's using engine tools, we're going to talk to them about uh, what they're doing, why they decided to, to engage in what they're doing, uh, and just put a spotlight on how users can get engaged. So we're, again, we're calling it the engine room. We're really excited uh, to kick this off. And so uh, today's the first one. We're kicking off the series with my good friend, Simon. Simon, do you want to introduce yourself really quick? G'day there. Hey, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, so I've been in the engine ecosystem for about four years now. Um, I've been obsessed with the NFTs since I first read about them in engines white paper back in 2017. And I just thought it was the most remarkable way to use the blockchain, um, as a way for companies to create better products, like whether they're digital products or physical products to have that, uh, undeniable verification, transparency on the blockchain. It just made sense to me mm -hmm. that this was going to be a mass adopted thing. And lo and behold, it was. Who'd have thought? Well, <laughs> um, so uh, at that point in time, I got really obsessed with Engine. Um, I got involved with the community. I was very outspoken. I was writing articles. I was really, I was really just very passionate and just obsessed straight up. Um, and then eventually, yeah, you I were. came on board. And, um, hey, with Engine. I, I have to interject. <laughs> I have to interject here real quick. Your enthusiasm is what originally got me really excited because I came into Engine as an advisor. I don't know if you remember, but this was like mm. late 2018. I, rem I totally um, remember. And I started interacting mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, yeah, you and Ilya. Um, and your your enthusiasm was infectious. I mean, at that time you were doing multiple like video interviews and I just remember thinking like, wow, this guy, not only does he get it. In fact, I looked up to you, you like you, you don't know this, but originally when I came into the company, oh, I didn't know much about blockchain. Right. And, and so I was like learning and absorbing and just like anything I could get my hands on. And the one like steadfast pillar in all of it was watching you talk about how this was changing your life. Anyway, I had to interject there because it it's it's it was powerful. Uh, thanks. I, I was really so appreciate it. Really that. inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, and and it was just how I felt and I was just sharing how I felt and I'm really it's it's an honor to have been able to um had that effect on you and and it's been an honor to work with you for for the years um that came after as mm -hmm. well and um, it's been something that's been so yeah. worth working on because I think that it really does provide better outcomes for people. So um, during that process, I, I, I came on as VP of marketing, uh, helped with uh, branding and PR and, um, of course, uh, de de uh, onboarding adopters and making sure that they could use our tools and doing the best we, c we could to ensure that that'd be as successful as possible. And um, over the years, I got just really, really jealous about the kind of um, the fun they had to they, they could have and how how they could really dig into um, the complexities of, of NFTs in a very nuanced and interesting way. And um, again, it just sparked another level of obsession for me. And, and it, I knew that that was a, a path that I had to follow. So um, eventually I founded my own company called My Metaverse. Um, there's two sides of what we do. Uh, one of them is basically a games platform, kind of like Steam for NFTs, 
like a games library or I like to call it a metaverse explorer because it sounds really exciting and it makes me feel good to say. Um, <laughs> and, we're, and we've got the other side of the business, which is called um, My Meta Studio, which is more like a game development studio where we can really dig in and, and investigate how to create games in a scalable, in a, in a useful way, uh, with NFTs being um, a pillar on top of the gaming economy. Why not? while adding to the gameplay experience, adding to the fun in a sustainable way and, and not, you know, just trying to address the kind of problems that come with that. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a wild ride. <laughs> We're only just beginning. And, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to be here. And I'm excited to have you. So I want to dig into this a little bit. Um, for those of you who don't know, so, yeah, Simon, you mentioned you started my metaverse. Um this is a play to earn games library. Uh, it's an NFT app store. It's a discovery platform. Talk to me a little bit about what exactly my metaverse is. Cause there's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. So basically it's all about just providing the best user experience possible. So I want players to be able to say, Hey, I'm interested in play to earn games. I'm interested in metaverse like experiences. Um, how do I find them? And, and one of the options I, I want to be available to them is just to be able to go straight to mymetaverse.io, uh, have a look at all of the games that are there. Right now, we've got um, My Meta Minecraft, which is our Minecraft server, but we're about to release our MMO, which has been a real passion project, and we're really excited about that. Um, but on the, in the background, we're building this tech stack that uh, other developers can adopt, and it makes it easy for them to adopt the engine ecosystem. So uh, the vision is that we can provide all of this value to developers, give them a reason to join the platform, and then players can just come to mymetaverse.io, hopefully one day see hundreds or thousands of different games mm -hmm. there, um, and just jump in and start playing. Um, a, a, there's a custodial wallet that's there. So basically, they can just start receiving NFTs. They just, they just literally just jump in, create an account, play some games, the NFTs just land in their account. So there's no um, onboarding kind of um, onboarding complexity or anything like that. It's just basically a traditional gaming experience. And then from there, they can connect their account to the engine wallet and then just press the withdraw button, move the NFTs on the blockchain where they can be stored safely forever and traded on um, open marketplaces. So, um, yeah, it's just about um, making it easy for developers and game gamers. Um, That's, together. yeah. So what you just described is, is simplification and it's really accessible. It's something that we've talked a lot about at Engine, you know, the blockchain space is not known for its usability. Right? So especially as you as you started um, talking about how do yeah. we onboard the masses, right? How do you how do you make uh, blockchain technology part of a person's mm -hmm. everyday life? This this concept of quote the metaverse, yeah, right. Um, so usability engineering is going to be paramount to, you know, we think the success of what it is that we're building. And so we've really spent a significant amount of time on on uh, user interface and user experience and really just removing uh, any and all friction points, which is exactly uh, like what you're talking about. But I want to I want to take a step back. OK, so my metaverse, if 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 I'm a player and I go to your website, I'm a player right now, walk me through the experience. What, what do I encounter there? Mm -hmm. So um, I could give you an example of how the experience will be when we launch my meta MMO, because as you know, Minecraft is its yep. own, is its own platform. Um, so, so basically right now, if you want to go and play Minecraft, you have to go and buy Minecraft, you have to download it, you have to jump jump into the multiplayer section, um, type in um, mc.mymeta.studio and enter our server on Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And then a little link will, will show up and then it will ask you to click the link and then it'll send you back to our website at mymetaverse.io and then you'll and then the link will be established. So for me, this kind of complexity is is not a great user experience, and that's not really where we want to go in the long term. Where we want to go in the long term is more um, more more easy to showcase through our new game that we're launching called My Meta um, MMO. And and these are names that we're just um, these are kind of like 
names that we're going to probably maybe change mm -hmm. eventually. We want to we want to get the community involved and get them to help us like rebrand and find something that's really perfect. But basically with my meta MMO, um, it's a full metaverse experience. It's a full MMO experience. So what does that mean? So in Decentraland, that's a, that's a metaverse experience. You go in there, you talk to people, you have cool content, you can look at cool stuff, you can use NFTs. It's got all that. But it's also got a full MMO experience where World of Warcraft, you go in, you build your character, you level up, you create your own life. And then there's other MMOs where you can actually create houses and properties and this kind of stuff so all of these are going to be features in the in the mmo now the onboarding experience of that is going to be beautiful it's basically going to be you just um go to mymetaverse.io you find the game my meta mm -hmm. mmo you download it and then you click log in and then that's just going to open up a window you log in to our website and then Easy. it's done the link the the link is established during that process and it's just yeah, you're just clicking through. It's just guiding you through the process. You, the screens are just popping up in front of you and you just follow the thread. So um, that's that's only possible because we control the, the the client, which is the thing that you download. Minecraft, we can't do that because the client is controlled by them. So we can't right. really provide a great user experience. So this is more of an example of where we want to go and what we want to allow other developers to do as well. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful vision, man. And I want to congratulate you. So you, you, you started at engine, you wore many hats at engine in marketing, uh, developer success. So you were part of really the beginning framework for the adopter program that I've now inherited. Um, we, we have a colleague at, at engine, his name's Renee, he's done a phenomenal job over the last year really picking up where you left off you I mean you were slogging through originally uh, the, the the grind of um, <laughs> really I think convincing uh, game developers and companies this is gonna be a thing this like really this is a thing and it's all gonna be connected mm. at some point I think we early on yeah. called it the, the multiverse we had six or seven games these were the early days this was 2017 2018. Um, talk to me a little bit about your journey, because I, I think in order to understand more of what you're building now and your vision for where my metaverse is going, it's it's important to understand where you came from, right? Because you you started in a very organic place, mm. excited about what Engine was building, excited about the tools that we were offering, and that that um, swelled naturally into what you're doing now. So I would love. I would love for you to kind of just walk our audience through how did you get to where you're at now today? As in like the journey through engine as well or, um, yeah, or, yeah. or even further back? Um, I, I'd love to go even further back. I, I would love um, to just, cause it paints a picture, right? Like it, it's, you, you're not just building something with my metaverse. My mm. metaverse is, uh, it, it's, it's more than a passion. It's more than something that you're inspired by. Like this is a mission for you. This is a vision and a mission. And I, I want to understand and I want our audience to understand so many of our adopters. This isn't just, oh, we're building a game. So much more than that. This is forward thinking innovation that is changing. I mean, it's changing everything about like how we interact digitally. Mm. No, that's that's so true, and I, and I think that um, kind of the way that I've I've grown up has an impact on why I'm so passionate about it. Like, um, you know, I grew up um, with a with a single mother, um, a very very poor household, um, and um, yeah, and just basically kind of always seeing injustices. What I, what I felt were injustices and inequality around me. And kind of not really being angry about it, but just wondering like if it had to be that way. Um, and and I think that that tracks forward to seeing blockchain and seeing play to earn and just going like like this is a thing that we can build to to try to to try to level the playing field for people. Um, but when I was around kind of twelve years old, I taught myself how to uh, create websites and write HTML and this kind of thing. Like. I mean, basically, most developers taught themselves um, initially. I never really got past the the simplicity of, of HTML and CSS and, and these kind of things into real programming. Um, and also, I was really, really just I loved games. To me, they were and they were a way to um, experience 
stories and narrative experience challenges and grow like for me like a gaming is a very positive thing because it trains you to um to 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 reach for the next level reach for the next level like in gaming you never really fail and just quit like you know <laughs> like you do yeah. with a lot of things in life and, and i think like in a lot of um in a lot of ways we're kind of in the real world tries to teach us to do that uh, mm-hmm. and a lot of people think like that and 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 they don't they, they see failure as a very very harsh harsh thing where i've always kind of just seen it as feedback it's like oh cool well, it didn't quite work out but here's what we could do to do better and when i when i really think back to where i got that from it's it's absolutely gaming it's like mm. you know playing mario and you, you can only get halfway through the level and say oh i've got to jump here this time or and this kind of thing so um i've always felt like gaming was powerful in that way i couldn't really express it the way that i can now but um yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's obviously formed like a huge part of my um, my perspective. Um, after after school, I more got into like business development and um, partnership building and, and working for uh, web companies to to bring on um, clients and this kind of thing. And that was that that helped me really um, kind of optimize how I communicate a lot a lot better. And it's really mm-hmm. it's been it's been a key to to allowing me to step into uh, what I do now, which is really more about team building and communication while still Mm -hmm. understanding the tech side of things at a very nuanced level. Um, But yeah, it all just kind of comes together. It's it's really like strange when you really track back (laughs) your life and think about all of the random things that don't seemingly fit together, but they absolutely do. And like, like how, how can you, how can you, um, how can you quantify gaming as an educational tool? But I really think it is. Um, so yeah, the, and then, um, I think, uh, finding engine and, and the team allowing me to, uh, level up, uh, within the company was, was a huge inspiration for me. And just engine ended up and being like engine being the predictor of such a, like huge movement, um, like engine predicting this and, and by believing in engine, me predicting it as well. It kind of feels. It kind of feels like at this point we know how to see the future, and that gives me a whole other level of confidence that um that that we can really uh, keep pushing through and, and make it happen. How did you connect to Engine originally? Um, I saw an advertisement for their their ICO on like a on like a website, um, and I read the mm-hmm. white paper and I watched VTEX interview his first interview with Box Mining. It's like it's really classic. Like it's really mm-hmm. low quality, but like the passion and the the intelligence and and everything is just clear and undeniable. Uh, and and then you look at the actual screen quality. It's like uh, all uh, like pixelated and weird <laughs> angles and bad lighting. Yeah. It's just yeah. like. <laughs> Like it's, it just goes to show that sometimes, like you have, you just have to trust the vision and intelligence and and the passion, which which yep. is a um, signifier of the drive and determination that will follow. Um, and so, yeah, I got obsessed. I I started writing articles. I asked for a job. I begged for a job. I begged to be able to freelance articles for mm. Engine, and they started releasing articles. And then I asked for a job as social media on on so- the social media team. So I first came on as social media director, and then um, we found that like mm. um, we we really needed to do a lot of well, we discovered the opportunity to do more PR, and and I was really like I really like dove in deep with that, and and started like reaching out to publications pitching pitching press releases and and starting to get us like um more and more no, more and more articles posted and this kind of thing and so it kind of became clear that i was more getting involved with with more than social media so i asked for the vp of marketing position um and then and then from there like i, I yeah just kept going just kept going just kept trying to push us forward and yeah. and um then yeah started talking to game developers and found that that was the most rewarding thing out of everything like just hearing their ideas hearing their intelligence being yeah. able to soak it all in and and get that vibe from them and go back and forth it was just so rewarding so then i moved to the vp of development because, success position because they're the real use case they're the real mm-hmm. use case i mean they're they're literally like slogging through it trying to figure it out on a daily basis and i know yeah. between you and our co-founder and cto vtech radomsky the two mm-hmm. of you have spent hours and hours and hours talking with our adopters maybe yeah. maybe take a minute real quick pause on your journey and talk about 
your interactions with our adopters because it th- I think again this is leading to the to the narrative um y- your website says you want to you want to save the world and I want to <laughs> lead up to that point so do you start talking with these adopters these game developers what what triggers inside of you talk to me about some of those conversations and and what did you do with that the big thing that really that we really um the, that we really aligned on or what what we really vibed on and 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 jived on together was the impact it had for players like how we could make things that they could really they they could really own forever um how we could make things that um create things that really gave them value that could positively affect their real lives and like really like all of the early adopters that joined engine they were just so passionate about that and and so was i and we could just we could just talk about that forever basically um the other the other thing that i really found was um obviously there's like real complexity there's a new level there's a different type of complexity when you're adopting nfts like yeah. it's not like a, a you know all games all mmos for example experience inflation every single one world of warcraft all of them except when everything's yep. centralized you can kind of rein in that inflation after the fact and you can just you know, you can just kind of alter alter things afterwards. But with NFTs, it's a different. It's completely different. You have to make you. You have to really strategize and make your decisions first. Because once those NFTs are out there, you can't really rein them back in. That's right. And there was there was all of these kind of really interesting um, struggles that that they had to go through that are inherent with the blockchain industry. And I really I really felt their pain, and and I really wanted to help them um, be you know help them solve these problems and. Um, as, uh, yeah, as we dug in further and further, I really like enjoyed that process of being able to help and enjoyed that process of being able to solve problems. And, and I thought that, um, I could actually help even more if I really went through that struggle myself as well and created my own games and created my metaverse and, and created mm. kind of, um, templates that they could, that other adopt, ad- adopters could have could use to make their lives easier so they, so these adopters they're already so far ahead like they're 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 even further ahead than me but there is going to be a new wave of developers coming in and if i can help yep. solve problems for them in a in 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 some way whatsoever that would be just incredibly rewarding for me so that's um that's definitely a huge part of the mission <laughs> as well so thank you for walking us through that so you you are you are so committed not just passionate, but committed to changing lives, um, and 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 making. I mean, we've talked about this quite a bit, actually, just making a positive impact on the world and and on those around you. Um, you and I said this a minute ago. Your website says you want to you want to quote save the world, and that's a that's a really bold, <laughs> outrageous claim. <laughs> um, how, how do you think? I want to dig into that, right? Because that's that's fun. How is my metaverse making an impact that's going to save the world? Um, so the reason why I haven't retracted that statement yet is because we're going to be launching a new um, product or framework or something that uh, or feature um, that I that 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 I can't really. Um, explain yet because when i when i launch it i want it to go like viral and i want to do really great yeah. pr on it so if i drop it here then um yeah that kind of fair uh, enough kind of yeah <laughs> reduces my ability so um but yeah i think i think when we drop this feature people will go oh they, they are really like they have a plan in place to to make a significant tangible measurable um positive impact on the world so you you have you have a a microphone right now. You have a, a <laughs> stage. Do you want to do you want to tease anything out? <laughs> it's it's very involved with um, environmental environmentalism. Like you know how the big beef with NFTs mm. right now is that mm-hmm. um, people are just saying, "Why yep. would you create an NFT? It just helps the world burn," and this kind of thing. I mean, first of all, that's wrong. <laughs> like uh, NFTs have no yeah. carbon footprint. Ethereum has a carbon footprint, you know? So if the NFTs are on a, yeah. um, you know, a carbon friendly blockchain like JumpNet or Affinity, then, you know, the, the carbon footprint is either zero or very small. 
Um, however, you know that that narrative and that truth doesn't seem to be as strong as the as the NFTs are making the world burn narrative. So um, I'm taking it a step further and and making it um, hmm. unequivoc unequivocally um, undeniable that NFTs can uh, reduce the environment can can save the world. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna watch for that announcement. Um, I, I think that's an amazing cause. Um, you, you just touched on something and this is a good lead in cause I have it, I have it in my notes cause I, I wanted to, to get your perspective on this. So you, you know, this, um, there's been quite a bit of pushback on NFTs recently, mm. not just by gamers, but even, even uh, on a more broad basis than that. Yeah. And look, I think there's, there's logical, very passionate um, viewpoints on both sides. But I'm going to stay agnostic at the moment because of my position at Engine. I'd love to give you an opportunity to speak to this because this is what you live day in and day out. You're a builder. You're building. Um, what, talk to me about this controversy and where do you see yourself within that narrative? Yeah, so... Um... Uh, on a recent call with with the engine um, adopter community, Cliff Corley um, said it in a really really great way. Um, you know, he sees it as like people are we're we're building this amazing building, <laughs> and people are walking, and we have and we've only laid the foundations, and um, and that's all. And people are walking into the building, going, "Hey, where are all the walls? Like this building sucks." Like, <laughs> but to be to be more specific than that. Um, you know, uh, the the present um, is not is never uh, really an accurate um, identifier of, of what the future will look like. We're problem solvers. We're going to solve these problems. Engine. That's why I love Engine. Engine are problem solvers, um, and all of these problems right. will get solved. So, um, when it comes to the environmental argument, Engine already solved that problem by launching JumpNet, which is completely carbon neutral. Um, and then there's a lot of argument, a lot of other arguments as well, like. Um, oh no, JP, JP, JPEGs are worthless because you could, they're just images, and you can just right click and save them, and then, and then you know that means that <laughs> who cares? Like they're valueless. But, well, number one, like you know, NFT isn't a JPEG, so uh, and 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 you know, an NFT is a certificate of ownership that points towards a JPEG, and and that's that's fine. But Engine really never was um, around that use case. Engine was about you own this NFT, you can unlock. You, this NFT yep. is a product that allows you to unlock benefits in all of these different games. So first of all, this, that argument falls flat on the face. Second of all, I think JPEG NFTs are great. And, and once we put them in the metaverse, like my meta MMO, and you can only hang up your JPEG on your wall in the metaverse if you own it, good luck right, -click, right clicking and saving that experience. <laughs> like. Yeah. So, so what I hear you saying though, is, is it has utility. It has real world value. It has in metaverse value, but it also has real world, like physical world value as well. Yeah. I mean, when you're, when we're all walking around with, um, whatever, whatever products come out, Google glasses or, um, Apple irises where we're literally walking around and we have augmented, um, aspects of the world, you, you know, you could you could switch on your NFT app in your augmented reality glasses and just look at a wall and enjoy enjoy yeah. some art and only be able to put that art on the wall when the NFT is there. Then you'll see like there's there's going to be boundless experiences that come up that 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 can't be right clicked and saved. Mm. So um, you mentioned Cliff. Cliff's our our good friend. He's at Lost Relics. Um, amazing game. And he's mm. a, a one man team, which is extraordinary, he's by the an way. An amazing developer, yeah. <laughs> he he is. He's not only an amazing guy, he's an amazing developer. It's true. Mm. Um, and and we're super grateful to have him part of the engine ecosystem of adopters. But um let's maybe take a second and look at the other side of the table. Mm. Because there there are very passionate gamers who go, We don't, we don't, we don't need these, we don't want these. I have a theory, and, and I wasn't going to weigh on weigh in on this, but as I've gone through some of the Reddit threads and, and paid attention, 
um, since that original uh, uh, Venture Beat article um, where we talked about, look, we, we want to try to solve these problems and maybe we weren't as um, detail oriented and, and um, uh, just with the the fullness of scope. We didn't, we didn't go to all the places we needed to go as part of the conversation. We just like lightly scratched the surface. Um, looking at some of these other side arguments though, I think one of the main consensus points is um, they just want to make a bunch of money, right? It's just another <laughs> alternative means of monetizing in a game and we already have a, a good economy in that game. We don't need this quote unquote true asset ownership. What does that even mean? And to your mm -hmm. point, you said it's, it's just a JPEG. Why, why would we, you know, they just want to make more money. It's just a JPEG. It's, but, but that's actually not what an NFT is. And truly an NFT has utility. It actually does something. And if you hold it, like you're a participant in something now, like you're, you're actually obligated to do something with that NFT, uh, especially if it's in a game. I mean, it, it has, it unlocks something. It takes you somewhere. It, um, there's so many different unbelievable use case scenarios there. So yeah. what in your, in your purview, I mean, what, what are you seeing on the other side? Is there any validity? Is it, is it logical to kind of rethink this? What are we not seeing? I guess is my question. Um, so I can I can totally see that um uh, some someone on the outside looking in would would say, hey like I've got to play this I've got to buy a three hundred dollar NFT to be able to play this game like that's that's really expensive mm -hmm. that sounds like a bit of a money grab to me, um and and yeah that 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 sometimes is the current situation but um again I believe these problems will be solved. Part of the reason why this is occurring is because um you have such crazy gas fees on on um chains like ethereum yeah. so you literally cannot if you if, you, if you're going to have to pay like 30 dollars in gas you can't sell an nft for less than 30 dollars like you need to you need to sell it for 60 dollars to make a, a, a hundred percent markup which is most businesses which is what most businesses want to make um and and that said, like there are projects that that even go way further and take it way too far. But what we're doing at my meta, my meta MMO, is it's going to be a free to play game. Like, how can how can you mm. really say that we're money grabbing when you can just download our game and and play it for free? Now, the other thing that we're doing is we are releasing NFTs through the game, so you can just play the game, and then you can receive NFTs mm -hmm. for free. And then you can then go and sell those NFTs and, and hopefully make a, a small amount of money. I'm not going to say that anyone should be quitting their job or or just, um, you know, just going expecting this to just be the way that they the only thing they have to do in life for the for, for the next 10 years. Um, but I'm just saying that, you know, hopefully you can get some value out of the game that translate to, to some form of real value in the real world. So. Again, like how can you say that we're really trying to money grab or take advantage of people? Now, there will obviously be uh, products that we sell, just like every game, just like Fortnite makes $2 billion, $3 billion a year on right. selling content that's only accessible through their game. So the beauty of that is, though, when we sell this this $30 avatar or um, or this um, mm -hmm. you know this, this $10 emote or something like this, someone can buy it off us. And then they can use it and they can enjoy it. And once they're done, they can then resell it and maybe get back um, half of their money or a quarter of their money or all of their money. Or maybe they might even sell it for more than they got it for. Um, maybe more. So if it's now if rare. rare, hopefully you... more. I mean, we're trying our best to make sure that it's more. But, you know, I, I don't want to, to um, you know, I want to manage expectations like it could be less. It could be more. Um, but I guess that what, what this does for me is it is it allows us to align with our, our players. Like we can create value and you can um, benefit from it as opposed to we create value and you just pay us and, and the money just goes one way. The money goes from you right. to me as a developer. This new, this new uh, system That's means key. that the money, the money can go all around as an economy. So it's just, to me, it makes a lot of sense. And yeah, and I can understand if it's a bit too complicated. Too, so yeah no I think the way that you just described it 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 isn't complicated 
you're what I heard mm-hmm. you just say, and I think this is so paramount and critical to to I think understanding the conversation. It's about the players. It's about giving them more mm-hmm. options, right? Yeah. It isn't just a transactional thing. A one time mm-hmm. I purchased this. It's only used here. Oh, I just heard the game shut down, or was just acquired by somebody, and they're they're discontinuing that, right? I've mm-hmm. lost now everything. What I heard you just say is. We care about our players and therefore we're creating these items. They're they're being created now in games. Mm. We're creating these items though that are transferable in perpetuity. They're like, you can own them. You can, you can sell them. They, they might become ultra rare. They have Mm. other uses, maybe in other games. You can hodl them in your wallet. They actually have value. That's yeah. amazing. And we can never take them now, back off I'm, you, even if we wanted to. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so I'm I'm a gamer. My 14 year old son's a gamer, and mm. I can tell you, you know, we're not we're not hardcore gamers, um, but but we play games, right? And and mm. this concept of owning our items and being able to like he can own them when he's. 25. I mean, he, he can, he can earn them now. He can work hard in a game and earn them now. And let's just thought experiment. It becomes ultra rare. Maybe he, he wins the skin and it, it's, like, you know, diamond skin, right? And somebody wants to buy that and pays him $5,000 for it 10 years from now. It's nostalgic. It's fun. It's ultra rare. He's now able to pay for college. Mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So I think the conversation has has uh, kind of a twofold um, way of looking at it. There's short term benefits, but there's also long term benefits and gains mm. as the metaverse starts building itself out. So yeah, I think it's a fascinating conversation, and I can't wait to to as we. Um, go week by week highlighting more and more of our adopters on, on uh, this podcast, the the engine room. I want this to be a place for safe discussion because I do think there's good points being made on either side. That being said, um, the, the real value when it's done right, the real value is there. It's undeniable. It's there. Yeah. And so Just I to, think um... our part of it, engine is to, is to make sure that it's done well and done like mm. – the right way, right? Anyway, yeah. And I do want to just, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, slightly agree with the counter argument um, to a certain extent. I think, like in the in the play to earn ecosystem, um, the one nuance that's net that that does get um, glossed over slightly is that the money has to come from somewhere. Like it's not just appearing out of midair. So there is someone that does have yeah. to buy uh, some NFTs, and then you buy that off off this this company or you buy it off other users and that's the difference like that person that wants to mm, that wants mm-hmm. to buy that Fortnite Fortnite skin they can only buy it off uh Epic Games and and I love Epic Games um and I and I think Fortnite's the most is just a very amazing game but um just being able to to give that money to another player instead of um the the, the company itself that that is what it's really about. It's about sharing the value. It's about sharing the opportunity to me. That's a really great point, Simon. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. So uh, I want to end on this. So you you mentioned gas fees. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Efinity. So fast forward, you're doing my metaverse now. Um, we talked about uh, the, the congestion and fees associated with ethereum transactions um Mm. it's not sustainable we all know that what is it about affinity that excites you yeah i mean to be honest it's the perfect nft blockchain like it's 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 i mean i don't want to get too technical Mm. on it but um it's scalable and it's infinitely upgradable i know that uh it's already testing at many millions of nft mints and transfers per second that's mind blowing. Like on Affinity right now, if I want to mint an NFT, one NFT, it'll literally take 
like minutes, like 15 minutes or something like this. And it'll literally cost $30 or something like this. It's just mental. So on Infinity, you can mm. mint millions, not one, millions of NFTs and, and transfer them per second. That's just, that's just crazy. Um, now, uh, there's also just these, all of these other mechanics that make it perfect for, for, for adopters. Like mm. I have, I have mentioned on this podcast that, um, you know, we are creating my metaverse to have a custodial wallet. Well, actually now that affinity is here, mm -hmm. um, there's actually a more decentralized way to do that with these things called discrete accounts where, um, another developer that might want to, um, you know, take take the more decentralized route as opposed to working with us at my metaverse could just go straight to the engine platform, create um, when when a user comes in, they create a discrete account, which is an on chain account, and then they just start dropping NFTs in there. And then the the user can just click a button and then that account becomes theirs. It's just beautiful. All of these kind of problem problem solving solutions are just incredible. Like the fact that developers can have gas tanks, right? So um, there's a there's a there's a there's a way for developers to create gas tanks where they put their own EFI into the gas tanks, and then they can attribute those mm. gas tanks and pay for their users. Now, what this means is that these users don't even have to uh, learn how to use crypto. They can just they can just create a subscription or, or just pay pay the developer in fiat or you know twenty dollars and and give me unlimited transactions or this kind of thing. They don't have to jump into the complexities of the crypto market. So then we have 2.5 billion yeah. gamers that can just start playing NFT games and not even noticing any difference in user experience. It's just, it's perfect. And, then, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, no, that's huge. Okay, as we wrap up, I wanna ask, um, what does your community have to look forward to in the coming months? Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be actually a huge month this month. Um, we're, we're launching, um, my mm. meta MM, my meta MMO season zero. It's going to be called chaos and it's going to be, uh, really exciting. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's going to just have like all of the MMO, um, the, the MMO kind of experiences in there. It's going to be free to play. You can just jump in, you can start mm. farming items, leveling up, um, fighting mobs, uh, you know, going through quests and then building your own house. And then as we start to get feedback mm. from the community, we're just going to perfect the gameplay first. And then we're going to start layering NFT mm. utility on top of everything. And we've already done this in Minecraft. We can do it here. It's it's going to, it's going to be yep. really fun. So do you, are you going to have like a teams element? Yeah. Like can you form um, yeah. a team? Mm -hmm. Yep. You can form, um, you can form like casual parties. Okay. So you just, uh, form a casual party and join, but there's also full guilds. Like you can have a guild and you can um, Love it. build together Love it. And, and, and everything. So, um, so that's going to be huge. Right, and so, then also so my metaverse this is a out. platform. I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out. I want, I want a few of us at engine and I will spearhead this to create a team. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm in. Fun. I'm in. This is my declaration. Yeah. I'm in. We'll build we'll build an engine office in the in the metaverse. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, it's yeah, gonna have full amazing. voice chat. Anyway, we, we actually have a have a meeting every week in there, um, just just with our team and it's yeah, it's the best hour of my weeks. <laughs> mm. Amazing. Okay, so Last question, how can, so our listeners, how can they get involved? You, you mentioned your website earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Where can they get connected? How do they get started? Yeah, um, I'd recommend to just go to mymetaverse.io, um, have a look at, you know, the, the, the basic um, format that we have right now. We have uh, heaps of new features coming to that as well uh, over the next month. Um, you know, all of that uh, carbon friendly, all of these environmental solutions that I was just talking about, but also um, the ability for us to start selling NFTs through there, distributing NFTs through there, um, and people to be able to start remove, to start moving those NFTs to their wallet. Um, that's all due to come this month. Um, and yeah, you can go and check that out. Uh, click on the Discord, uh, join us in there. Click on the Telegram, join us in there. Um, we really try to be community focused as far as like what guides our decisions and our um, and you know, just how we think about the scene, like we really value a lot of input. So, um, so yeah, that, that's probably the most 
the most valuable thing. If if we can have um, you know them inputting and giving us feedback, and you know we really want to like we really see like our attitude as a team is to seek negative feedback. It's the only way that we can sharpen our skills and, hmm. and get better as get better products and and become better as people as well. So. Um, so yeah, uh, all feedback's mm, welcome. That's um, good. Obviously, it's nice if it's polite, but <laughs> if it's not, we'll still we'll still um, you know see try our best. <laughs> Con- constructive feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, last, last. Uh, I, I'm going to end every podcast episode with this question: um, uh, Is there anything thought provoking that you want to leave our audience with? Ooh. <laughs> um, I think NFT could, could be slightly will... controversial. Could it's up to you? <laughs> I think NFTs as as a certificate of ownership will be used to back every single valuable tradable product in the world one day. From things like your houses, your collectible shoes, your collectible hmm cars i think i think um it's going to make every single market in the world more efficient i think right now if i want to buy a car i have to you know go down to a dealership or or haggle with with another person who's selling their car i would much rather just go on to an nft marketplace purchase the car well and have it in my wallet walk up to the car with my wallet and then it just opens and let me lets me drive away. I think this is this is going mm. to change how all markets interact. It's going to make all markets more efficient. And once people start realizing that, I think it's going to um, uh, not only um, change the user experience, but also make these markets more valuable. Like right now, when you want to go sell your house, yeah. you have all of these fees and processes in the way, like stop slowing down the process. That actually devalues the house because... Yep. Um, because you actually have to spend all of this money just to get it done. And then all of this inconvenience, it means that less people are buying houses, less people are selling houses. It devalues the whole market. So basically with um, mm. with this kind of system in play, the economy will grow, GDP will grow. It'll, it'll basically um, allow for a, a new world order with more fairness as well, because someone in, in Bali, which is where, where, my, where my, um, my dad and my, half my family live, um, someone in Bali can, can trade with someone in America for once. Like, you know, they don't have all of these middlemen. They mm. don't have a boss that's controlling them and all of this. I have something valuable. You want something valuable? Here you go. Let's just make the trade. There's not all of these hoops to jump through. So, yeah, I think it's going to impact every single every single valuable tradable thing in the world. And I think it's going to um, be, the, mm. be a stepping stone towards more equality. Man, that is that is brilliant. I love that. And, and it's an amazing thought experiment. And I do agree with you. I think, uh, I think everything's pushing that direction. And, and what you're talking about is full like infrastructure shift, mm. how we do things shifting. It's really exciting, but it has to be done. Mm. Well, it has to be done the right yeah. way. <laughs> Simon, thank you so much for joining me today, man. So appreciate you and all that you're doing, uh, to our audience. Thank you for tuning into our first podcast. This is the engine room. And I'm your host, Caleb Applegate, Chief Operating Officer here at Engine. Thanks so much. Simon, cheers. Cheers.